And the good thing with Athena is you don't need to you don't need to configure and and uh, and run the the Redshift cluster, and you always need to pause it and so on. So that because that can be a lot a bit annoying. I have I haven't used Athena until now, so I I can't uh, I can't fully say like you need to configure it like this, like this, like this. But it could be a good way of actually starting with it, to to because it, it's simpler, it's a software as a service tool where you don't need to configure that much. Okay, then let's do that. The simpler it is, the better it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's a it's a cool way of of actually um of actually uh of actually processing data and, and using it as a data warehouse. I ha I learned that from uh from uh, within Hadoop platforms and basically um, what AWS is doing here is the same thing. On Hadoop, uh, they're doing the same thing. You have uh, you have HDFS, which is basically the file system like S3, and you can uh, run Hive, a data warehouse, on it, and have external data. You have external data within the warehouse, and then you you're you're uh, connecting your uh, your visualization, your Tableau or whatever, and on it. So you're basically you're running the other way around. You're running SQL queries against this here, and the data warehouse actually there is no data in it. There is data that is laying around in files here, and you're you're basically having a like a big NoSQL store. And that's the same thing that you have here in this part. You don't need to you don't need to create tables, you don't basically within the system you only define okay this is this is how the data looks and then you you access it. So it's a really cool way of 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 NoSQL uh, accessing the data and and do uh, and for the for the user it looks like it's a it's a normal database because he the user doesn't see that that the data is laying around in files. <laughs>